Hello and welcome so much. Welcome so much. <sighs> Hello and welcome to the studio. Last night I was up late burning the midnight oil, as they say, um, finishing this song and video for Lemon Shredder. And this morning I got up early and I'm thinking while well, it's all fresh we can go through it and talk about what's here and how it happened. This song started when I was making um, lemon poppy seed muffins for my friends Caitlin and Yash. I thought to myself as I was shh, 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 doing the lemon zest, I was trying, I was going off recipe. So the recipe said three zested lemons and I thought, okay, that's great, but these are lemon poppy seed muffins and I just made them a few days earlier and I thought I could go more lemon and more poppy seeds if I'm honest. I upped the poppy seeds from two tablespoons to three and a half. It was, and it was, that was a good decision. The lemons. It was a lot of zesting. Zesting a lemon, I don't know. Our lemons here are green. I'm, I don't remember the last time I zested a yellow lemon, but I think the green ones are a little bit more rough. The, one, the species we have here is a little bit of a rougher rind peel. And so it takes a lot of effort. So I was grinding all five. By the end, I really got into a rhythm, and I was thinking, this would be great. So I went to go get the camera, but then I realized that they were coming to pick up the lemons in a taxi, and if I had gotten out the camera, it always takes longer than I think I'm gonna, it's gonna take. So, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to get out the lemon zester next time I start a song. And so a few days later, this song started. Um, let's jump into it. All right, so the first thing I recorded was, um, even though I knew I was gonna do the lemon zester, I decided to start with just a little backbeat. And here we got that. Okay, I also doubled that and did a second layer of it pitched down. The second thing I recorded was indeed the lemon squeezer. Let's take a listen to that. Because of the friction, I wasn't able to really get it at a perfect rhythm, but I kind of like the the asymmetry of it, if you will. It's like kind of, sometimes it's on the front of the beat, sometimes it's a little bit on the back. It gives it some or, like nice organic, organic. These are organic lemons. These are literally from the garden, actually, from our lemon tree. Okay, the next thing I wanted to do was, I felt like adding some vocal harmonies. We started with this one. Then I recorded this one. I'm not a great singer. When these are soloed, I'm pretty embarrassed. And then the third one. So the three together sound like this. So then I just added some effects. So this year I kind of think serves as like the the belly of the song. Now I wanted to add some arms, some legs, and a head. So for the arms, um, I thought about pulling out the synthesizer. And so you'll see um, in the video that I'm playing a MIDI synthesizer. MIDI is just recording the notes that I'm playing, how hard I'm playing them, the volume of the notes. And then I can, on the computer, push that through some different synth engines. So I chose a couple, you'll hear it here. Later, it joins up with this one. This sound here is I added to that synthesizer. It's an equalizer that selects just some certain frequencies and then also a bit crusher to take away the quality. And um, the preset I'm using here is called, I think, Supermarket at 3 a.m. This layer just has the bass notes. And I pushed it through this really gritty synth.
I think something that I like to do when I'm doing something that's kind of nice and calming is I want some unexpected sounds in there. And I think when you hear the song, you don't really notice this really dirty, gritty layer very much. But I think it, I don't know, I think it just makes it feel more like a, like a real thing rather than like ear candy, you know? If it was all just like nice and calming. The idea of using the T as a percussion instrument was completely off the cuff. I was just sitting down to record some more, some of the vocals, and it's allergy season for me. Like, there's pollen everywhere right now. Everything's flowering. I mean, maybe I just woke up. Maybe you can even see it in my eyes. It's just like... <coughs> it's a difficult part of the season for me in terms of allergies. So, I thought, while I'm singing, I should probably have a glass of tea because, you know, I don't feel the best in the head. So I went out, grabbed some lemongrass, put it in this glass, and um, I was just getting ready to sing, but the mic was already live, and I had my headphones on, and I heard it. Oh, that's a really cool sound. I mean, who doesn't like sipping something hot, you know? And I think it has that feel to it. And then the clink, ka-clink, ka-clink, clink, clink. When the camera was rolling, I had no idea I was going to do that. And that kind of, honestly, was the first time there was a distinction between like the verse and the chorus, I mean, as I see them, it was when I switched to the clink, click, clink, click, clink, clink, clink. Later when I was doing the guitar, I was like, oh, the clink, click, clink, click, clink, clink, clink is coming up, and I switched what the guitar was doing. I thought, oh, I'll record this. I was like, perfect, it's Lemongrass Tea. The name of the song is Lemon Shredder, it all fits. It's meant to be. So now I feel like the, the, the song has a belly and some arms, so now let's draw some legs. For the legs, I thought, ooh, what about a nice, organic, bassy, earthy sound? And that was the guitar. A lot of times when I record guitar, I like to give it a nice, thick sound. So I'll add in another layer where it is pitched up. And then also another layer where it's pitched down. And the three of those together sound like this. It's a nice thick sound, I think. I have no idea where the idea for the bicycle came from. Yes? It's watching. Oh. I love the sound of a good healthy freewheel. And the original idea for this was like, I was like, oh, what if for a transition I had, you know, like almost like a whoop, like a rev up that people do like into the chorus or something. I thought, oh, what if I did that, but with a bicycle and I just whoop, throw the chain, it was like Wah! something like that. But I got out there, I set it up and I pressed record and I thought, oh, I'll just start from the beginning of the song and when the part comes, I'll throw the, throw the pedals and I'll make the sound. But I couldn't help myself and I started kind of dancing with the, the pedals and turning it chick, chick, chick on, on, the, on the beat. So here, here, here's what that sounds like, just on its own. I wasn't planning on dancing either. This was just just started happening and I just started, I went with it. You know? This is where I was in the song and I thought, you know what, I need to put some shoes on this song. You know, so, something to, to really make it walk, you know? So um, I started messing around with some drum kits and I found um, some drum sounds that reminded me almost of like late 90s, like breakdance music drums. And um, I programmed these in on the push, as you see in the video. I wanted to make it funky. Now, I cannot play that drum pad machine live like this, like this is all quantized. So I play around, I get the idea, and then I go in here and I, um, you know, like this, I'm clicking through and making it the way that I really want it. So I, I don't have the ability, I'm not that skilled to play this live. So that's why in the video, you see me play it a bit, but because I had to go into the computer afterwards and like tidy everything up, 
it, it's not as easy for me to film that aspect of the song making and making it look fun. With the bicycle chain transition, I also knew I wanted some sort of like corded harmony, like da ba 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 ba. ba. And I thought that was going to be a kazoo, but then I was out recording the bicycle and Amari came to see what I was doing. And I was like, oh, you know what's better than kazoo? Your voice. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. And then here's the second one. Great. Ba, 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 ba. Great. Ba, 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 ba. I also knew that I wanted those to be two different ones because the song has enough repeating elements that I thought, well, when we do have these cha these transitions, we should make them different to keep the song alive, you know? So I know I'm focusing mostly on the, the songwriting and the recording. If you're more interested in knowing how the animation and the video elements are done, like, tell me in the comments and I can, I'm happy to walk you through maybe the process of animating and editing the, the beat videos. Thanks so much. Um, you know, these videos are specifically for patrons, so if you're watching this, I appreciate you so much. You're the one that makes all, these, all this possible. Um, sometimes it's hard to prioritize, you know, passion projects, and I feel like now that I have a small audience of people who love and support me, if you do love me, you don't have to love me, um, it just makes it easier to find time to do these things. So thank you so much. Cette vidéo a été créée par Christopher Gagnon.